Today, I hope I get to inspire you a little bit about how to get to know more about technology that's in our world and right in front of us right now. So, how many of you recognize this? Raise your hand. That's right. They're some of the most famous Bored Ape NFTs. Now, did you know that the most expensive Bored Ape NFT so far has sold for $3.4 million? I mean, that's a digital asset. And it went for $3.4 million. That's not only a trend, it's a market maker. We have seen Bored Apes in the headlines because this is a very successful NFT story. So what is an NFT? For those of you who don't know already, the formal name for an NFT is a non-fungible token. An NFT is a digital asset, and it lives on the blockchain. What's so special about it is it's a one-of-a-kind digital asset. It has authenticity and proof of ownership that live on the blockchain. So understanding NFTs is one example of how we're all adapting in the world right now. When I look at the world, I'm seeing trends that are evolving. I'm seeing huge advancements in technology. We have blockchain, we have NFTs, we also have artificial intelligence. And what I see is, right now, we're all talking about AI in so many different ways, and it's changing the way we're adapting. Right now, our global population is adapting not only to technology, but global situations. And unless you haven't seen the news lately, AI is changing the way we communicate and the way we adapt together. Look, we're not participating in relationships the same way we did when I was a kid. I mean, back then, we were in the backyard playing in nature, right? But right now, almost every human connection, especially when I watch my daughter, who's 18 years old, almost every human connection is including technology these days. It's like we have a built-in smartphone. And it's a completely different experience. It's not that belly-to-belly, share-bread, share-lunch experience anymore. We're making meaningful connections through technology. And we're looking into the future right now, and what we're seeing is there's exciting experiences that are happening in the metaverse. It's sophisticated, and it's so advanced that right now we can barely imagine what it's going to be like. So what is the metaverse, you ask? Well, the metaverse is a collection of digital worlds. Now, people will access this through their browsers, through mobile apps, through AI, VR, through gaming consoles. Does it sound familiar to you? I mean, it has been in the news, it's been a topic. Because the metaverse is the name of the next stage of the internet. It's evolution into a fully immersible, fully interactive experience online. Now, we get to create a customized avatar there. You get to navigate virtual worlds make friends around the world easily. You also get to buy products and even sell products in the metaverse. So in essence, everyone here will have a digital identity in the virtual world. Now, a leading research firm that we know, named Gartner, predicts that by 2026, that 25% of all people will be spending at least one hour a day in the metaverse. That's only three years from now. Right? That changes a lot of our habits. But you know, at the same time, 30% of all corporations are going to have their products in the metaverse. It's changing the way they're looking at things. Now, our brain is adapting to this new way of being, but I'll tell you what, the brands are jumping right in. They see younger generations love gaming, and it's really natural to them. So they're engaged online, they're showing us what they're paying attention to, and they're incorporating technology in almost everything they do. You know what they are? The access economy. But right now, we get to be the access economy together. It's not us and them, it's all of us. See, we don't need to own the car. Why? Because we have rideshare apps. We don't need to own the house because we have house-sharing apps. 
What we want is access to what we want when we want it. So people are letting go of the things they used to collect for many, many generations. And the marketplace is changing as we speak. Attention is the valuable currency right now. Money and time have always been valuable currencies. And don't get me wrong, they will continue to be very valuable. But as a marketer in this season, I'm seeing advertisers and brand builders just like me know that getting attention and keeping it is the key. So attention is the valuable currency right now. What we want are more eyeballs. What we want is to get their attention. We want to keep it, and we want to keep them coming back again and again and again. So let's look at a company who's doing it right, right now. I bet some of you know this company. It's called Roblox. Now, Roblox was actually started in 2004 by two guys, and it has evolved over time, but they're really smart. They have teams of developers. They have people that are in there that are blurring the lines between gaming and the metaverse. Now, in 2022, which is just last year, Roblox generated more than 50 million unique logins every day. I mean, let that sink in. Every single day, more than 50 million people logged on to their platform. So we got together and we asked ourselves, why? Well, the number one reason is community. Number one, what they're interested in is customizing their experiences with the people that they care about. It's a community where they're redefining the feeling of connection. If the experiment was to see if people would be more connected and share in the community, guess what? It's working. In fact, it's working so well. I don't know if you could wrap your head around this number. 12,000 billion. 12,000 billion hours have been played on Roblox. 12,000 billion. 12K in front of billion. Like, to me, that's unbelievable. How could so many people be spending so much time in this app? Well, Roblox has figured out a lot of things, and we can learn from them. First of all, Roblox is hosting metaverse experiences for huge brands. Brands like Nike, brands like Gucci. That's right. Gucci Town is living on Roblox right now. And people are buying bags in there, virtual bags from Gucci, for over $4,000. Can you believe that? $4,000 for a virtual bag to carry in the metaverse. And they're selling them. Nike has done hundreds of millions of dollars in sales online. So what they're doing is they're creating experiences for their customers. They're making it easy for them to come on Web3 with them. You know, Starbucks is doing it as well. They're doing it with a loyalty program. In December, they gave away 5,000 holiday cards to their best members as gifts. Do you know those cards are selling right now? Basically NFTs. They call them stamps. They're selling for nearly $2,000 online, and the price keeps going up. So Starbucks made it easy for their customers to enter Web3, to create long-standing relationships. And you know, as a marketer, what I want to do is model that success path not only for brands, but for communities and for my community alike. Because this is community engagement and building in the metaverse. Today, I'm beyond grateful to be collaborating on a global NFT project with the Vatican. It's so exciting to announce this. Isn't that awesome? Thank you. Yes, it is the Vatican with the Pope. I am working with them directly. Well, traditionally, the Vatican is the last to adopt new technology. But right now, they're at the forefront of this movement. Now, what they're doing through the Keys of the Vatican project, we're bringing the Vatican and its valuable historical art to the entire Web3 to create experiences for people. But why? Why? Because we want to do good in the world on a global level. We're raising funds for people who are refugees of the Ukraine war. We're raising funds for adopting people in the Congo. There's all different things that the Vatican does to help needy people. And this is one initiative to make it easier. So I want to show up with them and add value, add ideas. I want to take people into the metaverse and into an experience that feels customized for their needs. Why? Number one, 
FOMO. Fear of missing out. I'm, I'm telling you, just like a lot of you, I don't want to be left behind. Number two, I want to be part of the evolution of this because it's so dramatic. And number three, just like the Vatican, I want to be relevant together. So we get to be the pioneers. We get to build something special. And what is my building block of choice? Well, it's blockchain. To me, you can't speak about the metaverse without speaking about the blockchain. Blockchain and NFTs are built so that they are access tickets for my community. So I see NFTs as an access ticket, right? It's basically like when you go to Ticketmaster and you get a ticket to go see a show, you get it on your phone, guess what? It's almost like an NFT. The only thing that's different is it's not on the blockchain. The thing about the blockchain is it's verifiable for generations to come. So to me, it's all about the experience and having access. I get to create valuable and engaging experiences for my audience while they use their digital asset or NFT to simply use as an admission ticket to gain access to the community or the experience. So why is it important to pay attention to this right now? Well, I used to, in my early career, I worked at Stanford Research Institute in the e-learning forum. And back then, we were learning about something different. It was the 1990s, and we were learning about the World Wide Web. Do you remember when that was new, too? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Online learning was just a new idea back then. So here I am in a room, and there's professors from Harvard and Stanford and MIT and Berkeley, and we're sitting there and we're wondering and imagining, what's it going to be like when we have online learning and people come on the Internet and begin to learn? Well, fast forward 25 years, we had a thing called COVID, and it drove a lot of us onto the internet, including my daughter taking Zoom classes for high school. Right now, we can't imagine life without online learning. Zoom towns popped up everywhere I turned. Meetings that could be held in person now had the capability and reason to be fully online. And this reminds me of a quote that Einstein said. Everyone knew it was impossible until a fool, Zoom, who didn't know came along and did it. And they weren't the only ones who did it. A lot of companies jumped on the bandwagon to bring online learning, and it's been very successful, including universities. My daughter's half her classes she takes in college are still online. So right now I'm seeing Gen Z through my daughter and her friends' experiences. Now, they don't need to build courage or get brave or ask for help to go on Web3. No, they don't have to overcome any old habits either. What do they do? They just jump right in. That's what's happening. Their mindset is just do it. So just like in Roblox, they're creating meaningful connections and they're engaging in a dopamine activating way. Do not let that escape you. There are dopamine hits involved in almost everything on the internet. So what we're seeing in the next phase of Web3 on the internet is a digital economy. It's being born right now at a high scale. So the digital marketplace is a store for digital assets, just like the NFTs we're learning about. We get to design it. We get to observe who's coming in and joining us. What are they doing? Are they great teachers? Are they potential collaborators? Between AI and Web3 right now, we get to design new worlds together. How exciting is that? I mean, really, right now, there are very few real gold rush opportunities that are occurring in the world. I happen to live in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I see the remnants of what a literal gold rush did to an entire region. They had different mindsets that emerged in people during that time. First, there were the people who found gold. Then, there were the ones who came to sell shovels to the other people who want to look for gold. And then there were people in the community saying, what else do we need? Well, banks said, hey, if people have gold, they need a place to put it. So now all of these banks were born in the new economy. That's what's happening in Web3 right now. We're at the beginning of a digital gold rush. It's our time to decide how do we want to engage? How do we want to participate? Do we want to learn? Do we want to teach? Do we want to sell shovels, or do we want to build banks? This is a rare opportunity that gives us the chance to do all of those things. 
And I actually know presidents of banks that started them from scratch in just the last 10 years. So it's possible for any of us. NFTs are digital assets that are housed on the blockchain. So this is the reason why I want you to see it for your future. You get to put your real assets on NFTs and keep them in your own portfolio or gallery. So many of the utilities for NFTs are ways to put your collection of valuables, such as cars and houses and jewelries, you create an NFT out of each one of them, and when you distribute them to your heirs, you designate that they are the owner of those assets. So a digital asset can control ownership of a physical asset. You can design them, you can distribute them, and you can designate them to your heirs. The recipient receives the NFT, and then it verifies they own the asset. They're doing this in real estate now, and I'm telling you, as state attorneys, this is going to make their life a lot easier. It's going to avoid a lot of family squabbles over assets. So on the blockchain, in the metaverse, and in AI, it is providing us opportunities that are brand new for all of us. And what I hope you take away from this is inspiration. Know that people have access at every age, every background, and we're all invited to participate and play full out. This is my favorite line today, so I hope you guys hear this. Are you ready? Yeah. Always know, when technology advances, it never goes backwards. Remember when you got that remote control for the TV for the first time? Guess what? You didn't have to get up and change the channels anymore, did you? Back when we had horse and carriages and we switched to cars, cars took over. Technology does not go backwards. Blockchain is here to stay. Web3 is here to stay. I'm inviting you to come in early so that you're part of the group that designs where it goes. We don't want to leave everything to 18, 19, and 20-year-olds to design because they don't have life experiences like we do yet. So when we do it together, we get the wonderment of them and the experience of us that we get to put together and make it even more special. And you get to do it multi-generational in your own family if you want to, or your own company, because people in different generations have different perspectives and all are valuable. So I just want to leave here with the fact that every one of us can do this. One of my friends, Erin, just got on Roblox for the first time, and her kids were so happy because she had never gone on before, and they'd been on for years. But now they have a common language, and now they have something to do together. And that evening when she was having dinner with her family for the first time after being in Roblox, the kids were so excited to tell stories about how they can play together. And that's what I want for you, just like Erin, to be curious, to take the first step, and learn how to create your customized experience in Web3 too. See, we can create our digital community, we can grow digital assets, and we can connect in a meaningful way. And what I want for all of us is to enjoy the journey together. Thank you.